may or may not be in a bus station with very <laughs> cold chairs. My butt. Well, freezing. and it's hard because there's lights, which probably are good for the show. Oh, we got to look at that one now. Oh yeah, because I'm looking up. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. We Ready. Yeah. Okay. Oh boy. <laughs> Hello again, and welcome to Manch Talk. I'm Tammy simmons Garthwaite, And I'm Carla Garrick. And, and here we are in a new studio. Welcome. I suppose we are, uh, we're still figuring out the uh, logistics of it all. here, so to speak. And uh, so there might be a little backlight <laughs> behind us. There's a little us. light down there. They've got issues. That we, they're we, working on details. So it's we are in our new studio, which is the old bus station down on Canal and Commercial. Canal and Granite. Granite. This is Canal. That's Granite. Commercial's the one down near the river. Oh, the, okay. It's, I always have to think Canal's not near the so water. So, of course, I'm wrong, but um, oh, we are, we had a red light. I don't know if that I don't means know. something. Oh, see, it can change I people. I know. Oh, no, <laughs> we're going to be totally distracted. This All right. It's confusing, but it's great. It's wonderful. So, you know, it changes as good as a holiday, yeah. as people like to say, and... Uh, I'm down because it's easier parking. It's yeah. a little harder to get like nice little sushi right after. That's but, okay. you know, we can make it work. Um, All right. I am exhausted because I did super hard yoga today. I don't know I why I haven't done it in a while. And I was like, I'm not going to the gym because I had new movers. Oh, it's been a lot. It's been a lot. There's so been a lot going one on. One thing I want to just short, briefly talk about. Not, It's not a thing. I just want to explain some process things. Because I noticed um, last week we talked about the right to know bill. What is that? 1005? 1002. 1002. And it's coming up again tomorrow. Right. So for those watching back home or are like, how is that possible? They already voted on it. So there's a motion called um, reconsideration. The only, per only person who can move reconsideration is somebody who voted in the affirmative. So if the vote, no, regardless of whether it's ITL, ought to pass, whatever, if you voted in the fir affirmative, you can make file a motion to reconsider. Hmm. Often that's done right there on the floor. And it's usually, almost always, rarely is it actually to reconsider. Usually it is to end the, the bill, to oh, put okay. an end to it, because they'll say, we passed the bill, now we'll say, I'd like to reconsider, and I urge my colleagues to vote no. In other words, we're not going to bring it back up again. Okay. So that's almost always how reconsideration works. In this instance, and once when I was in the House, this I think is an actual reconsideration. I think that some of somebody who voted yes to pass the bill changed their mind and would like to reconsider the vote, which means on this Thursday they will vote on it well, that's not even true. There will be a motion to reconsider, which will need a affirmative. Pass. Yep, has to have you know majority. Um, and then, if the reconsideration motion passes, then they can vote on HB one zero zero two, which is the right to know funding thing. Um, so, anyways, that's just a tidbit for people at home because it is kind of confusing because. The words we use and the, the what the impact of those motions is at the state house isn't always clear. Well, it's also confusing, and it is also I mean it does sound like a exploitable tool that could uh, possibly be really abused. Well, so I'm kind of fascinated by the notion. I mean, in this case, I think it's it's the right outcome because yeah. I think people were very well, confused I do think about what the bill was about, and for folks maybe who want to know, so um, it. It's basically trying to punish every granite stater for the mm -hmm. bad behavior of a few outliers. Mm -hmm. So basically, Municipal is saying we need this bill because too many people are fi filing right to no requests and not picking them up is the reason they're giving, right? And um, and someone made a great suggestion. We were talking about it the other day, and they were like, well, what if instead of punishing everyone <laughs> for a handful of bad apples, why don't we punish the, the bad, bad apples? Fair. So, I mean, I'm not going to say let's introduce a fine, but, like, if you're either going to say I'm going to charge everyone or just to charge solve the this person, one right, person right. over here, why don't we just say we'll find the people who file a right to no requests and don't pick right. them up? 
Right. Seems like a better Something, solution. Something, right? Um, so anyways, that'll be in- it'll be interesting. Um, as far as uh, the this reconsideration being overused, it is a, it is a t- all motions are tactics up there. Um, in, in Concord, I'm talking. Um, in this case, I'm going to presume. I'm making a presumption, but I know that uh, there was a bill that I voted in the affirmative on because I thought uh, the bill had X, Y, and Z in it based on what they're telling, you know, everybody's telling you. And then afterwards, you realize, oh, and there's R and Q and T. Wait, I didn't want R and Q and T. I didn't know. Um, and I have a feeling that may have been the case here where people, it sounded good on the surface. I, like we said last week, it sounded like it was rectifying a problem, and it was in some way, but it was creating a completely different problem. And somebody may have voted, 20 people may have voted, to say, wait, I didn't realize I mean, based, it would have that impact. Based on the spread, uh, you know, Democrats were uh, across the aisle, yeah, Republicans across the aisle. I mean, I think it was just... It was a mix. But, you know, I so think we'll the see. important thing that people need to understand, and this comes out of the decision of Celseti versus the city of Keene from 2020, and uh, folks will remember this was actually the case where a professor at Keene State... Mm-hmm. Every year had her students, I believe they don't do it anymore, which (laughs) should tell you something about the state of our police state. Um, She would have her journalist students file right to no requests at various uh, town departments in the city of Keene to kind of teach Teach journalists how to do it so that they get to know the system. The city of Keene freaked out, decided they weren't going to comply with any of these requests. and it ended up in the Supreme Court. And what's important from this case, where also the judge did find that, you know, we do actually have New Hampshire constitutional rights to an open government. And in that decision, it said the salute, salutary, 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 salu- salutary I know, it's one of those words. Purpose right? of the right to know law to ensure both the greatest possible public access to the actions discussions and records of all public bodies and their accountability to the people is best served when the members of the public and the governmental bodies are guided by a spirit of collaboration. There you go. So it shouldn't be this hard, folks. Um, So anyways, that's the right to work stuff that I just want. I'm not right to work, right to know (laughs) stuff, right to work, right to know, whatever. Um, It'll be interesting to see how that vote, how those motions play out on Thursday. Um, I had this from last week. Okay. And it's not that big of a subject. I just think it's hysterical that we just keep having Uh, the same freaking conversation. And What do you have? So I have HB 1156, which is coming to vote on Friday, and that is the bill to ban the CDC and uh, the WHO's regulations from being binding in New Hampshire. We can adopt them if we want, but they don't actually. So that's voting in committee on Friday? I believe this is on the committee vote, yes. Okay. Uh, so it prohibits the enforcement of any CDC or WHO, which is the World WH organization, organization, which has no jurisdiction right. over Granite State. Right. Hello. Uh, to just say, hey, you know what? We aren't subject to your one your, world government whatever you nonsense. Decide. Fair. Yep. That's fair. It'll be interesting. To that. Um, so last week I noticed there was an article in the uh, Union Leader. And I then I it of course makes me go well. No, I gotta go look. Did I miss something? No, I gotta go look. So this was an article about how um, Democratic Senate Democratic leader Donna Susi, who represents Manchester over in like wards six, I don't even know six, seven, eight, nine, <laughs> somewhere over that way. <laughs> Anyways. Um, how she has begun the eleventh year of her campaign to raise New Hampshire's minimum wage, right? So, it just boggles my mind that they we just keep hashing and rehashing the same issue that apparently, I mean, are you just hoping for like the right lucky day? So, in New Hampshire, we do not technically have a New Hampshire minimum wage. Ten years ago, or however many years ago, we said, as a legislature, that we will follow the federal minimum wage, which is currently $7.25 an hour. Now... So that might sound ridiculous in today's world, because it is ridiculous in this way, today's world if anybody in New Hampshire was actually earning $7.25 an hour. Which they're which not. Which they're just not. Everybody knows that you can go to Dunkin' Donuts and get $15, $16, $17, $18 <laughs> an hour easily. So nobody's earning $7.25 an hour. 
So when they talk about increasing the minimum wage, one, they mean reestablishing a New Hampshire minimum wage. So it's not just increasing the number, it's reestablishing something that we eliminated. But there's repercussions because also in our laws, in our labor laws, it says that tipped employees of X number of industries, which I'll come back to, that earn, regularly earn $30 a week, I think it is, which is also absurd to me, in tips, $30 a month, those who regularly earn $30 a month in tips. So if you make $7.50 a week in tips, that number's weird, right? Okay. Their employers have to pay them at least 45%, which is like $3.27 an hour. So this is what the base minimum wage for somebody who's a server is. Joe, restaurateur, must pay you $3.27 or more an hour. Then you make your tips. And if you don't make $7.25 an hour in tips, they have to pay you $7.25 an hour. Okay, that also doesn't exist, right? Those are not... I mean, that sounds not, overly complicated, it's but just, sure. I mean, the bar is so, so low. <laughs> but if you increase the minimum wage to $15 an hour... Then you'll have a robot making your food. Right, because now, Joe Restaurateur, instead of paying, like, probably four fifty an hour, which is probably what most pay, has to jump that up to six seventy five an hour. Two, probably 2 or $3 more... Every single hour for every single server, which is going to equate to hundreds of dollars of excess uh, increased costs to the restaurateur, which means the prices of all their food items are going to go up, which means it's harder for you and I to go out and eat. So we're fixing the wrong things. I mean, literally, if you look at... <laughs> I think that's by definition now what the government well, does. Well, what's funny is... is we're just fixing... We're not, we're not, we're not solving any should, problems, well, we're just creating more. I mean, the fact that this is all, first of all, the fact that it says tipped employees of a restaurant, hotel, motel, inner cabin, or ballroom. Why not just tipped employees? And then, <laughs> where, based on $30 a month, that, shouldn't that be where... 65% of your income is coming from tips. Like, why is there I a dollar I don't even amount? know. I don't care. So if, I'm just like, if, why? Like, no one makes minimum wage. Well, like, I mean, literally, if, even if Donna in America. Susie and the Democrats think that there's things to be fixed to help with the labor laws in New Hampshire, then read the entire labor law thing and realize there are things that probably should be fixed. It shouldn't be limited to just six different uh, types of businesses. It should be all any employees that are making tips because a golf cart a caddy makes tips. A taxi driver, make, like uh, lots of people make tips. And to say it's all based on $30 a month, which has been there for as long as I can remember, which $30 a month, that's how much tips you should be making in an hour. <laughs> like, not in a month. So they're, it's just typical government stupid. Like, typical legislators who claim to be fixing things don't ever try to just fix the things that are simple and should be fixed. Well, the thing is also, it's because it's we're trying to control too many things. That too. Can I tell you about my little experiment on X this morning? Sure. So I decided to, you know, I, I have a love-hate relationship with the, uh, with technology. Mm. Um, oh, yeah. I, I do love it because it does make things better. I also have a hate relationship because I think it is very much rotting our brains, especially the poor little kids who I don't think have Should ever had non uh, yeah had an opportunity to not uh, be dopamine addicted. But anyway, so I upgraded to premium today for on, so what's that on about? X. So, yeah, so instead of, you know, like I think you paid like eight bucks for your blue check. Mm -hmm. um, this is, I think it was $160 a year. Okay, so so it's maybe like 12 ish yeah. a, a month. But you also get Grok the AI, oh, nice. uh, which is a, is, is, Twitter's own AI. Now, Elon Musk, uh, you know, left open AI because he said that they, the original vision, which was we're going to create this open AI platform that is actually going to be in service of the world, i.e. not manipulated and literally just giving you logic data, right? Which would be useful given, you know, where we are in the world and who are we supposed to believe and who's lying to you and all of that. 
So fine. So I upgrade this morning, and then mm -hmm. I was like, well, I'm really fascinated with censorship and how it works and having been banned and mm -hmm. silenced and shadow banned and, you know, suppressed and all those things. And, and you know, I, I always think of the C-SPAN interview I did where the guy sort of treated me like I was like a little bananas, right? Because he was like, well, what is shadow banning, Carla? This was in like 2020, right? Like, ooh, you're crazy. What are you talking about? But it's real, right? So we know that. So anyway, so, you know, because I'm a lawyer by training, I know how to ask questions. And I was kind of like, oh, I'm just going to go through the steps until I start to get the answers I want. So what Grok told me this morning, amongst other things, the following, I'm not going to remember the fourth one, so I'll just say three hashtags, were uh banned or suppressed or visibility decreased on Twitter. Trump 2024. Hashtag MAGA has been uh, suppressed, suppressed for years. Um, I, I know actually that hashtag Trump 2020 was banned in 2019, so pre-Elon. And I think most of this is pre-Elon. Right. It's just an issue of getting... And it takes time to get all, all of them, all of un them un untangling un untangled, all those. Untangled, yeah. right? But then it's so interesting because I've talked to the open uh, chat GPT AI mm -hmm. as well, right? So they have these sort of formulaic answers where they'll be like, well, reduced visibility means this. And then they give you the list, right? And then you have to parse out between the words, right. like how to, right. to get it to tell you stuff. The other one that surprised me um, was actually hashtag free Assange. Okay. Which I use frequently. Yeah. I mean, I don't use the Trump no, hashtags because no. you know I can care common, which obviously you know, it's timely. Which which evil uh, overlord is in charge doesn't really make a remarkable difference to any of your lives. I wish people would realize that. So anyway, so it's just really interesting to see within the time span. I think that we've even been doing this show yeah. together How so much three years, have four years, that. Um, that the censorship, the things we talk about, the big bro, the Orwellian, all of that is actually like a, a reality yes, now, an yes. undeniable reality that really, you know, you really cannot trust everything you see on the internet anymore, including yesterday. Did you see this? Someone went to testify in front of the Senate, and my phone blew up, New Hampshire Senate. And at first, I didn't think it was here, so I didn't right, really like care. A... And then I saw. So it is a lady who has the exact same haircut that I have. She was wearing a, a, a black and white, sort of like very, a, a very Carla pattern yeah. clothes. She did have a, a, a PLO scarf on, so I was like, OK, okay I'm that's hoping not... everyone knows that, that that's not my jam. But then she was wearing a mask. And so it literally it looks, looks like, like me, except she doesn't have as good eyebrows. <laughs> no offense, lady, but but my phone blew up. And huh. people like Victoria Sullivan like, what were are like, you doing? What, what why is Carly testifying like a Isn't crazy that? lady on this bill that you know everyone's like, what? And I thought, God, this is going to be the well, next okay. stage, right? Because that's how they're going to deep fake it. Like it looks like someone it's funny you're that wearing you say a this. mask, right. so you can't lip read, and, and then you they can't can see the whole features. Face, right. and then uh, people will just be like, oh. So funny you mention that because yesterday or the day before, Dan goes has his phone and he goes like this. He goes, look at this friend request I've got, right? And I was like, okay, and it's you know. Was it Jennifer. Pete Saint Ange? No, no, no. A fake one for no, him it was just this woman, very attractive picture of a woman, <laughs> right? But Dan's just like, what? And I go, okay. And I go, who's was, this? Hot he said skater. it was something that he commented on something. I don't remember what the post was, but he's like, he commented on something, and then he instantly got this Facebook mm. request from this woman, this woman, and he's like, but look at this, Tammy. So she has two pictures: this one of this attractive woman. And one of a dog in a house that almost looks exactly like ours. Oh. So Dan's like, so I don't even think this woman's real. I think this is all AI generated because yep. how, what's the chance that she has a dog that almost looks like Jenny in a house setting that almost looks like right. ours, but that would make you go, oh, look at the dog, okay. click. Right. Next thing you know, you're in some bots control. So I just thought that was, I was like, oh it's, yeah, this is all, there's a, so many good things that can come out of technology. And then I'm like, and then there's just the mud because 
you're going to have videos of you speaking that won't actually be you speaking because an AI generated version it, of you will be speaking. I do wonder if if this might actually be the path towards solving some problems, right? Because it's going to kind of go back to you can't believe anything right. it unless is opening you see up a it lot with of your eyes. Yes. own eyes, right? Because I mean, I I, I imagine. I mean, though, of course, there'll be products that evolve and things will change, and you'll be able to get like certain certifications, or maybe it'll become like. I mean, it'll get corrupted, of course, as things always do. But let's say like Moody's was supposed to, uh, you know, monitor credit ratings, right. right? Or whatever, or the Better Business Bureau right, is something. supposed to, you know, <laughs> oversee whatever. Maybe at some stage you'll have, you know, you'll have uh, deep fake <laughs> guaranteed free, oh you know, right, or like right. whatever it is, right? And so you'll be like, oh, I'm gonna get this app or this service that can tell me this. But honestly, you're not going to be able to the, discern. I mean, the technology is fairly new and you can So you'll barely, have to de start depending on like real life people that you actually see in real life. Per, real life, Which I think is would not be actually thing. good because also, you know, they don't, we don't talk about this, but the but the dopamine addiction for the children. I it's mean, I bad. think it it's is. actually uh, it's it's a brave new world in a sense that we don't understand what has happened there. Yeah. And I think it's actually going to be. It's, it's not going to be. And then when we go look back on things, we're going to be like, well, I should never have done that. Well, on I, lots of things. I, you know, I mean, it's uh, you know maybe it's like giving them. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I just, so, I don't think it's going to be A couple random great. tidbits. This yes. is just totally as you were saying things. I was like, oh, yeah, this. So um, Dan pointed out to me this morning. So there, um, this week, I think it was this week. Maybe it was last week. I don't know. Nevada had their caucus in their primary. And they have some weird mix match of the two. You can be in the caucus and not the primary and in the primary and not the caucus, whatever. And I know uh, Trump was, chose not to participate in the primary. So his name was not on the primary ballot. Nikki Haley was on the primary ballot. Nikki Haley came in second to, to no, none that. of these candidates. Yes, yes. I, I don't know what that. Yeah, that that's kind of telling because that I mean I could you can infer that I don't think it means no no candidate. I literally think that means that people want Trump. Right. And he's not listed here. Right. So none of these candidates. Right. And I think people have to wake up to the fact that that's just a reality. So, I mean, I, and I mean I I'm I noticed you have the paper. There's an article about um his court case and some Judge, you know, some judges, someplace said he has no presidential immunity because he's not president now. And I'm like, but what you're talking about is when he was president. president. So what? So I really still think what's going to have to happen, and I hope it's going to happen. And if it doesn't happen, it might be even worse. Supreme Court's going to have to decide if there was an insurrection. And I can't see how the Supreme Court can say January 6th was an actual insurrection. And when they say it's not an insurrection, what does that change? Because you got people sitting in jail for crimes in an insurrection, that won't be. So it'll be interesting. The other thing I thought was interesting is that Tucker Carlson is going to um, do Thank an interview you. with um, Vladimir Putin, which I was like, well, that's cool. That's interesting. And then people's melt, their brains all melted. And Bill Crystal saying, he, Tucker should not be allowed back in the United States if he interviews uh, Putin. Barbara Walters interviewed Putin. Lots of people have interviewed Putin. So oh my God, a, it's the job yeah. of a journalist to talk to statesmen, think, especially when we're at war. I don't know what, what is wrong so with we're, people. We've got Zelensky and everybody's everything. That's okay. But but because Tucker Carlson so, is so on the... So the EU is literally going to ban Tucker Carlson under the sanction laws because he talked to a, a enemy combatant or something. Like, like some that's nonsense. Crazy, but that's okay. But here's the point. Like, like... Can we just go back 30 years and be like, what is the role of, of, journalists. of journalists and reporters are right. to go places and right. tell you the objective truth of what they are right. seeing? They're not there to hail Zelensky as a right. hero or to pick sides even in the Palestinian or Israeli yep. conflict or whatever. They're supposed to be there and be like, yo, this is what's happening. These dudes shoot guns, the bombs that way. This guy shot a missile this way. We don't know. Here are dead yep. babies. And then yep. we, as citizens, can go, we're not cool right. with this crap. Stop and doing it. And we used to, I mean, nobody thought, nobody 
Barbara Walters, when she was alive, interviewed so many, such a big range of people, and it was always an interesting interview. It was never biased. It was always... it. Because well, otherwise, how do we know? How do you know? How could we possibly know anything about whomever if we won't talk I to mean, them? I mean, if Biden wasn't actually senile, he should be meeting with Putin. I mm. mean, that is what statesmen do. Yeah. Like, you're supposed to sit down and talk to the other side and, like, figure it out. You know what I mean? And it's just, it's, it's, we have, we have... I think we have entered idiotocracy. Yeah, we, we are just, at we're the living level in a really where bad it's movie. just um, um, little tidbit. Just because it's going to bubble up in the news, and there is a bill. There is a bill at the Senate, SB 375, that this bill requires school sport teams to be expressly designated as male, female, or co-ed, and prohibits biologically male students from participating in female designated sports or entering female locker rooms. This is a hot bill that is in the Senate. They, I believe, had a hearing this week. Um, but what's interesting is that bubbled up because um, the Division Two girls high jump in the track, the state track and field, yeah, the favorite to win is a boy in the girls high jump. You know, I, I, you know, why, why don't we just create a third category? Like, if you're affirmed or whatever word we want to <laughs> use, so I would say there should be four categories. One should be like straight up. If you're doing drugs, you get your own category. <laughs> I want to watch the people who are on all the steroids and all the uppers and all the stuff. That's the Olympics I would watch. So we should have that category, and then we could just straight up have male, female, and co-ed, uh, co-ed or of your choice, yep. or whatever but I mean, right it is true can you imagine if you're the daughter i mean you're the parent of a you know 14 year old track daughter who's running track and she's practicing and she's working out and she's and then this boy comes in it's just like what happened with rally Gaines. then this boy just comes in and now he, boy males and females have different physical attributes there yeah, are all different types of di physical attributes that change from no, um, no, we're all the same, no, Tammy, because you know, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, clearly, right? I have seen us do chin-ups. So easy, so easy. Right. No, no, obviously, right? men and women. Men have a different bone structure. We They're have different, different hormones. We have different frames. Yeah. We are different people. We have different organs. Yep. You know, so we're let's different. just get back to reality. How so that's about that. that? Um, you're not here next week. I am not. You're here not. Next you're week. in Mexico. Good for you. Um, Super Bowl wait. Sunday. Yay. I don't really care about Super Bowl, but for those is it of a you Wedgwood? Is it what <laughs> a Wedgwood? <laughs> a Wedgwood Bowl? Oh, I'm like, is what? <laughs> yeah, the Super Bowl football game is on Sunday. D couldn't tell you what time it is because I don't do the sports ball thing. Um, but if you're watching and you have, you know your party and everything at just make sure you say stay safe don't drive drunk all those kinds of things um carlo will be gone next week whether or not i'm here we'll figure that out and then um we'll be back at some point sometime and it's beautiful out it's gonna be like 50 this week so and groundhog day said early spring i think they're on to something all right thanks guys bye, bye.